Hey everyone, it's Jake here. Today we are looking at the 2020 iPad Pro, and specifically, this little guy, the LiDAR sensor, and how well it fares for 3D scanning. All right, let's get into it. While existing RGB cameras see the world much like our own eyes in color, LiDAR sees more like a bat. It shoots out lasers into the world, they bounce back, and that gives an accurate depiction of depth in the world. There's advantages and disadvantages of both methods, but today we're going to do three tests to see how this works out in the real world. First up is what Apple's been promoting the most with LiDAR, which is AR. Next up, we'll try measurements. And finally, and most fun, we'll try 3D scanning real world objects. Kicking it off with AR and Apple's example from WWDC, we can see LiDAR is a clear win for occlusion here. Although occlusion solutions exist for RGB cameras, they are niche, hard to implement, and much slower than LiDAR is. Trying this out with larger objects, the masking still stays true and pretty accurate to the real world. Something really exciting with LiDAR is how well it performs with AR and low light situations. Just like our eyes, RGB cameras are not great at seeing in the dark. Any ideas? Since LiDAR uses lasers and doesn't rely on light coming into the camera, we can get almost immediate initialization time even in low light situations and consistent rock-solid tracking. There's also way less drift. We can shake around the iPad and things stay where they're placed. Next, we're gonna jump into measurements with Apple's own measure app. What I wanted to highlight here is the initialization time for getting depth estimations. This is most people's experience with AR currently. It takes a few seconds and a lot from the user to move around to get an initial depth estimation. Since LiDAR doesn't require parallax to get depth, this means the user doesn't have to move around left and right and back and forth to get a depth estimation of the world, and it's almost immediate. However, it looks like the resolution on both sensors is about the same, and LiDAR doesn't improve the accuracy of any measurements. I tried this out with a few things, and the accuracy is about the same. All right, next up is the fun part. We're gonna try 3D scanning things in the world. We'll start with a medium-sized space, which is the corner of my room and a chair. Next up, we'll try a smaller object, a beaver skull. Don't ask why I have it. And then we'll move on to outdoor locations. So as a baseline, we're using an app called display.land, which is a photogrammetry app that uses the RGB camera. Basically, it captures a bunch of photos, grabs feature points, and then reconstructs the scene in the cloud. So for LiDAR scanning, I tried a few apps, but landed on an app called LiDAR Scanner 3D because it had a better visualization of what was happening in real time, and it had pretty good results in the end, as you'll see. Let's jump in and check out the resulting mesh. So first up, we have the photogrammetry result. This is looking pretty good. Uh, you can see it's got all the details in the bookshelf there. It's definitely not a final mesh, but it's something to start from. And we have the textures, of course. The LiDAR is pretty comparable, except you can see there's a lot more holes. There just needs to be more processing on this in the end, but they're pretty comparable. So as we jump into smaller objects, we can really start to see the difference in resolution of the iPad sensors. Uh, with photogrammetry, since we're just using the RGB camera and processing photos, the resolution is pretty high. Once we jump into LiDAR scanning, you'll see it is really low resolution. It's basically useless for 3D scanning. It's definitely geared for occlusion mapping uh, because of the speed. But if you look at the Face ID cameras here, they're super high resolution and you'll see in the resulting mesh that it is easily the best result, even if there are a few holes. 
So jumping into the mesh, we're really seeing the photogrammetry result is pretty damn good. It, you could put it in the background of a 3D scene and people probably wouldn't know the difference. It's definitely not a final mesh, but it's almost there. With the LIDAR results, they're fast to get, but they're kind of useless as an end result. This does not look like anything uh, like the original capture. So although the face ID array is kind of hard to scan with, we can see it easily gives the highest resolution results. All right, so we've seen how it holds up with um, smaller objects, the corner of my room, more medium sized things like chairs. But what I'm really excited about is trying it out in a larger scene and seeing how it uh, handles that. Uh, and we're gonna head out to a little park uh, near me in Seattle. The cherry blossoms were out last weekend, so hopefully y'all can see the Seattle cherry blossom season uh, along the way. Of course, it is also still a global pandemic, so we should definitely mask up. So unfortunately, there was no cherry blossoms. The park was packed. My dog didn't enjoy it last weekend, so this is a picture of him. But instead, we're at a couple uh, Seattle landmarks. Yeah, let's see how this scans. So with this next scan, I decided to do the photogrammetry and the LiDAR scan at the same time. I had to awkwardly hold my phone and my iPad up together, so excuse the shaky footage. But this really shows the advantage of both methods. With LiDAR, we get an instant mesh uh, and you can kind of see what you're scanning right away. With photogrammetry, it doesn't know the mesh immediately. It kind of needs to take all of those photos to pull it together. So with the photogrammetry, you kind of only get the feature points. Uh, so you only get a little bit of a point cloud to show you where things are. Uh, it's kind of really cool with LiDAR to see exactly what you're scanning and where. It's a lot easier to fill in the holes. So once we jump into the final mesh taken from different sensors, but the same capture, it's kind of disappointing. Um, the LiDAR mesh isn't any better than the photogrammetry results. So if your hopes were to buy the iPad with the LiDAR to get better 3D scans and photogrammetry to make 3D models, I don't think this is the right solution for you. Although we do get that mesh immediately, it's going to take the same amount of effort to scan for the same results. So scanning a few more things, I noticed the LiDAR did have a little bit more advantage with things like straight lines. Um, this might have just been because of the 3D mesh creation algorithm used for each solution. But hopefully in the future, someone will combine these two solutions together. So we could have the RGB textures of photogrammetry with the immediate mesh of LiDAR. All right, so that just about sums it up. Uh, I should probably start with the things I was really impressed by. Low light tracking was super impressive. Uh, tracking initialization time. This is awesome because so many people are turned off of World AR because they have to do this kind of motion to get things to track properly. The tracking accuracy and lack of drift were huge. Uh, you could place an object in the world, move the iPad around, wiggle it rapidly, point it back at that space and it was exactly in the same spot you left it. And of course, the thing that Apple promoted the most at WWDC, the occlusion mapping, because we can get an instant mesh with this sensor, we can occlude almost perfectly and instantly. That was super impressive to see in real life. The things I was kind of disappointed with were, they showed one video where they were kind of scanning a chair and it had a perfect mesh. Kind of think that video was fake. The 3D scanning with this is just not there. Um, currently, photogrammetry gives better results in most circumstances. Uh, it's a pretty low resolution sensor. It's good for what it's trying to do, which is occlusion. Not great for 3D scanning. As for who this is for, I see two categories of people that could really take advantage of this. The first being the AR professional. So if you have a client or an exhibit, uh, anywhere you kind of just need like perfect tracking, this is a clear win. Like other solutions really don't have occlusion like this yet. Um, the second category of people are forward looking developers. So if you want to just kind of get a leg up and see what this is going to offer before it makes its way down to the iPhone or maybe air glasses in the future, hopefully, um, this is kind of the, the vehicle for, for that. The person I can't suggest this to is the 
3D artists. If you're hoping it would improve upon photogrammetry, you're hoping a 3D scan thing is in the world. It's just not there. Um, hopefully someone will prove me wrong and uh, create an app that combines the advantages of photogrammetry and LiDAR scanning, but we're just not there yet, unfortunately. All right, so that's it for today. This video was a ton of fun to make. Uh, it was cool going out and scanning things like that. If you liked it too, please like the video. If you didn't, please tell me why. Uh, I went out into a global pandemic for you. Is that not enough? If you have any questions, please comment below, reach out to me on Twitter. I'd be happy to put this thing to the test if you have any more uh, things you want me to try out with it. But yeah, that's about it for today. Have a good one.